Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to continue with preparing the computer for a large orchestral template by optimizing Cubase. I'm going to begin by opening Cubase, and once it's open, I'm going to go to Studio, Studio Setup, Devices, Audio System, and in Advanced Options is Processing Precision. Here there's a choice of 64-bit float or 32-bit float. I'm going to keep it at 32-bit float to reduce the load on the CPU and memory. In this same menu, I'm going to check Activate Multiprocessing. Also in the same window is the Activate ASIO Guard option. I'm going to check the box and set the ASIO Guard level to high. This will maximize the amount of plugins my computer can simultaneously run. I'm also going to be very careful as to which plugins I actually use in my session. As far as I understand, plugins in Cubase take processing power even if I turn them off. Now I'm going to take a look at latency. Again, it's good to know that the amount of real-time performance latency you get depends on your audio hardware and its ASIO driver. I'm going to use ASIO drivers only since they were invented by Steinberg and are optimized for reducing latency in Windows machines. Here I'm going to start by going to Studio, Studio Setup, Devices, Audio System, and I'm going to look at the input and output latency values. These should ideally be a few milliseconds only. The most important adjustment that makes the most amount of difference in latency is the buffer size. The smaller the buffer size, the shorter the wait. For now, I'm going to increase the buffer size of my audio interface to 512 samples by going to Studio, Studio Setup, Devices, ASIO Fireface USB, which is my interface, Control Panel, and Buffer Size, which is Latency. I'm going to play the keyboard, and then I'm going to start lowering the buffer size until it's possible to play a VST instrument. I'm going to use a piano so there is no legato scripting to add to the delay. It also has a very sharp attack transient. Usually 256 samples or below is playable. Anything higher and the latency starts to become prohibitive for live playing. Later on when I get my full template loaded up, I'll keep lowering the latency until I get drops, pops, or crackling on playback. Then I'll start raising the buffer size again until I don't hear any drops, pops, or crackling anymore. The final adjustment we'll make in Cubase is the constrained delay compensation feature. To show you why this feature is important, I've taken the liberty of loading the mixer with various plugins. In the mixer, I'm going to go to the Setup Window Layout cogwheel and check the Channel Latency box to see which plugins have the most latency. Now I'll go to the row on the tracks or channels containing the channel latencies and click the down arrow on the right next to any channel's latency to open the Channel Latency Overview window. This window will only be available if significant latencies are present. Here I'll find out which plugins have the most latency. Notice when I turn off a plugin, the same amount of latency remains. It does not remove that latency. Although all plugins introduce latency, if a plugin has negligible latency, it will not show up in the channel latency overview window. If there is an asterisk next to the latency amount for a plugin, that plugin has a live button or low latency mode. In the case of this multiband compressor, it's a dynamic processor that looks ahead at the upcoming audio and then processes it. But there is some latency introduced in the plugin as it needs time to process that audio. So a certain amount of latency or delay is introduced. The live button in the multiband compressor turns off these look ahead functions, but this lowers the accuracy of the processing. When there are two asterisks next to the latency amount for a plugin, that plugin doesn't have a live button or low latency mode. In my opinion, the best solution is to go to the project window toolbar Right click on the left side of the info bar near the redo undo arrows to make constrained delay compensation visible and turn it on when recording. This feature temporarily turns off all plugins with high latencies and also saves CPU processing power. Incidentally, this button is also available on the transport bar. Notice that when constrained delay compensation is turned on, any plugin with latency higher than the threshold allowed by constrained delay compensation is turned off. You might be wondering where you can set the threshold for this feature. If you did want to change the threshold for the constrained delay compensation feature, you could go to Edit, Preferences, VST, and you would change the threshold millisecond number under Delay Compensation Threshold for Recording. Any plugins with latencies higher than the millisecond number shown here will be disabled when constrained delay compensation is turned on. It's set to 0.0, .0 milliseconds by default, meaning that all plugins are affected. I'm just going to leave this setting the way it is. Before recording anything, I'm going to click this button and then click record. Notice when I turn it on that certain plugins are disabled. 
after I'm done recording, I need to be sure to turn Constrain Delay Compensation off again so all plugins work again. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like and leave a comment below if you have any questions. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.